Hello everyone, welcome to this short talk. I'd like to thank the Malta University Historical Society for inviting me um, to give this short talk as part of their MUHS lockdown mini talk series. And as a topic for, for this um, mini talk, I, I've chosen Michel Foucault and the politics um, of history. Michel Foucault is an influential 20th century French philosopher, born in 1926 and died in 1984. And until this very day, he remains one of the most cited figures in philosophy and the social sciences. But some would say that Foucault was as much a philosopher as he was a historian. And the relation between philosophy and history is an important one for Foucault and his work. At least this is the question I will explore in this lecture. What is the role of history in the work of Michel Foucault? At the outset, I will point, point out that for Foucault, historical inquiry always had an active function, namely to provide a diagnosis of the present. You might think that a historical inquiry connected and concerned with the present is a contradiction in terms, but not for Foucault, since he, thought, he saw the task of thinking um, as using history to understand how we became the way we are, and importantly, to indicate possible ways of transformation. So this diagnosis of the present for Foucault was always a social concern, and it had a social concern. After all, in his work, Foucault presents a social theory or a political philosophy. So his outlook to history is always connected to a transformative work, to engage and transform particularly existing relations, relations of power. In fact, the lifelong concern that Foucault had in his work was to identify different ways in which power functions in modern societies, particularly. In fact, this was the fundamental question for Foucault. How does power function in society and how has power transformed its modes of functioning throughout history? And to answer these questions, Foucault turns to history. This is the point why Foucault engaged with history after all. Foucault studied history at school when he was young, alongside philosophy and literature, but quickly went on to specialize in philosophy at the École Normale Supérieure in Paris. He then graduated in psychology, which was in fact the discipline in which he lectured first and worked in the beginning of his career. However, rather than a doctorate in psychology, he ended up writing a 900-page doctoral thesis titled precisely History of Madness, 1961. What were the influences on Foucault's approach to history? Foucault's relation to history has always been an ambivalent one. Some historians praised his work as presenting an important challenge to historical inquiry or even proposing new ways of doing history while others regarded him as a bad historian. Others even accused him of murdering history through his books. Responding to these harsh criticisms, Foucault once said, I am not a professional historian. Nobody is perfect, perhaps with a degree of irony. Jean-Paul Sartre, another important French philosopher, famously criticized Foucault for having no sense of history. Foucault responds, to this accusation that this, is, that this is true if by sense of history, one means the ability to construct totalizing and histo totalizing historical explanations. Foucault's criticism of history as a discipline was his refusal to accept its quest for perfect or pure historical truth. Foucault harshly attacks pretenses of establishing objectivity in historical explanations or a fixation on a progressive and linear understanding of history. Here we can see that Foucault was particularly opposed to Hegelian understandings of, of um, progressive um, historical um, explanations. So if not this sort of history, what were the influences on Foucault's um, approach to history? Foucault's, Foucault was writing in the 1960s in the wake of structuralism as a philosophical and intellectual um, school of thought. And he saw himself as working in that school of thought, even if he never embraced the, this label. He was influenced by, and positive, positively cites the work of philologist Georges Dumézil, 
a French philologist who worked on myths and religion in Proto-Indo-European societies, as well as the work of French anthropologist Claude Lévi-Strauss, who introduced um, structuralism in the field of anthropology. But he also cites other influences as marking, as he says, a possible new adventure in knowledge. And here he includes historians like Fernand Brodel, the leader of the Annal School, which emphasized long-term trends in social and cultural history, focused on space and geography and the study of what they called mentalities. What, what Foucault particularly appreciated in the Annal School is that they decentered the importance that was traditionally given to the biographies of famous men and big events, and instead focused on impersonal or perhaps anti-humanist economic and social trends. And their data was seemingly unimportant reports, be they medical or statistical reports that were largely ignored by traditional historians. So this was the sort of historical um, approach that Foucault at least admired, not uncritically, but at least was positively influenced by. He also positively cited the work of historians associated with the Annal school, such as Denis Richet and Francois Fouré, who were historians of the French Revolution. Beyond France, um, Foucault also positively cites the work of the Cambridge School of Intellectual History, associated with figures like Quentin Skinner, and through, who, through their work, emphasized a historicist or contextualist mode of interpretation, where they placed primary emphasis on the historical conditions and the intellectual context of the discourse of a given text or a historical era. Other influences, um, important influences on Foucault were French philosophers of science, particularly Georges Canguillem, and, and also Gaston Bachelard, who introduced notions such as the epistemological rupture and emphasized the role of discontinuity rather than continuity in uh, historical events. On this point of discontinuity, Foucault is often described as a philosopher of discontinuity when it comes to history. And uh, although this can be understood insofar as in his various works, Foucault engages or identifies particular historical breaks and discontinuities. However, his task was rather to explain and to give form to what was actually happening in what appears to be drastic or sudden historical um, transformations. And we will see some of these examples in a bit. And finally, one, one final set of influence um, on Foucault's approach was in the work of what, what is known as hermeneutics of suspicion, which is the phrase that philosopher French uh, French philosopher Paul Ricoeur um, ascribed the label he ascribed to thinkers like Nietzsche, Freud, and Marx. Of these three, it is perhaps Nietzsche that stands out as the prime influence on Foucault's approach to history, with what, we, what he will call um, genealogy, and I'll be explaining what I mean by this. But before I do that, I want to say something about Foucault's method, and particularly his books, that is, what does what does what do his books actually look like? How does he uh, apply this historical approach, historical method in his works? Um, Foucault, in 1970, from 1970, held um, a chair at the prestigious um, French institution, the Collège de France, and his chair he titled it precisely "The History: A Chair in the History of Systems of Thought," and this already gives us um, an and a clear idea of the type of interest that he had in history, namely that he was concerned with systems of thought. That is how ideas and concepts find themselves um, entangled within practices that determine how a particular historical era thinks. And in fact, in all of his books, in all of his pr primary works and his monographs, um, the, the most important ones can be seen on the slide, Foucault wrote precisely histories. His books, although philosophical books, are histories. In fact, as the titles signify, starting with the first one, on the top, top, top left-hand side, we see History of Madness, which was his, his doctoral thesis. Again, if not history, the history of something, we see similar words like the birth of, 
um, which is a nod, in fact, to, to Nietzsche, who too wrote books like The Birth of Tragedy. So we see, for example, Discipline and Punish, The Birth of the Prison. We see also The Birth of the Clinic, another important um, book of his. We see also the, his last set of works titled The History of Sexuality. Um, there are four volumes now. The fourth volume um, actually was published after his death um, two years ago, the English translation of which will be forthcoming in January, um, this coming January. So as we can see, if, so if not history of something or the birth of something, um, Foucault also introduces the idea of archaeology in historical inquiry. So we see, for example, The Order of Things, an important influential book published in 1966, subtitled An Archaeology of the Human Sciences. And right next to it, we see The Archaeology of Knowledge. Right? So all of his, in all of his um, primary books, um, Foucault writes histories. And how, how does he do this? And I will, I will explain how he, his method by introducing three concepts. Um, firstly, the concept of archaeology, um, which f is associated mostly with the early writings of Foucault. And what did Foucault mean by archaeology? Um, of course, he's not meaning the, the actual academic discipline, but what he means by this is that historical inquiry has a, a kind of archaeological focus, namely it digs down into the past in order to uncover the traces of distinct historical periods. Foucault is a thinker of the archive. He works through archival historical documents in an attempt to reconstruct how a particular historical era taught. That is, what were the conditions for the possibility of certain thoughts and practices to actually happen? So the kind of questions that Foucault would ask, for example, in Discipline and Punish, would be something like, what made the prison possible as the dominant way of punishing people? What were the knowledge? What was the knowledge, the scientific knowledge, medical knowledge, um, and also institutional arrangements that in history made the prison emerge as the dominant and sole way of punishing people? But we'll, we'll get to that. Right? So archaeology, Foucault self-characterizes his early work, at least, as an archaeological um, work. So he does this through archives uh, in order to reconstruct the discourses of a given age. So that's associated mostly with his um, early work. In his so-called middle work, associated more with books like Discipline and Punish and The History of Sexuality, um, Volume 1, he calls his method genealogy. And here I'd like to reflect a bit more on his, on his work. This is an important notion for Foucault. But the way he uses genealogy or the way he describes genealogy is not um, an inquiry that is concerned with um, the origin of something. So Foucault is not concerned as much with the origin, with the pure point um, when something emerged, but rather in the series of transformations um, that enable the emergence of something. So Foucault is interested in the descent and emerges of practices which nowadays we take for granted. And here I'd like to also to introduce another notion. Foucault described his work as pro providing a history of the present. And again, this might sound like a contradiction in terms, but the way Foucault approached history and his interest in history was always motivated by a concern with the present, with the contemporary. So Foucault always started his work with a contemporary concern, be it the prison, be it issues of, of mental illness, um, be it issues of medicine, and also sexuality. His rooting is in the present, and he uses history. It is also a political use of history to retrieve, to understand how we became the way we are as individuals and, and particularly as societies. What were the discourses, the shifts in relationships of power, the institutional transformations that affect how people feel, how people behave, and how society um, runs itself. And this is the task of, ge of genealogy. Genealogy has a more explicitly political function in Foucault's work. In fact, his middle works, his works in the 1970s, are more explicitly political in the sense that they seek to understand how power functions 
in contemporary society. So Discipline and Punish, I return to this book, The Birth of the Prison, a very influential um, book in the social sciences. Why, it was influential because although Prima Facie, it seems like it is a book on the prison, it is not just that. It sets itself the ambitious task of describing a new form of power that emerged in history around the late 17th um, and 18th century, which he calls disciplinary power. It is the type of power that functions not only in prison for Foucault, but all our society is governed by disciplinary techniques, be it of e techniques of examination, techniques of what he calls normalization, and also of hierarchical observation. This is the book, Discipline and Punish, in which we find Foucault's famous account of the Panopticon, where he discusses the work of Jeremy Bentham, um, who was also a philosopher, but a social reformer, who proposed a new way of punishment through the panopticon, no, the all-seeing um, eye where prisoners are controlled through the power of the gaze. And these are the sorts of concerns that Foucault was interested in. He, was, he, he did a lot of historical work on the notion of the gaze, starting from the birth of the clinic, the idea of the medical gaze, the type of perception um, uh, that was practiced in, in and this practice in modern medicine and the disciplinary gaze, which he discusses in disciplinary discipline and punish. So that is genealogy, which is the second type of uh, approach to history that Foucault promotes. And lastly, um, Foucault in his later works introduces the concept of problematization, which he saw as uniting his previous concerns in archaeology and genealogy. Problematization is not just um, uh, the activity of making something become problematic. Problematization for Foucault was using history to see how a particular experience, be it mental illness, be it medicine, be it sexuality, how these phenomena, how these experiences are constructed by the discourses and institutional arrangements that make particular forms of experience um, possible. And this is the sort of interest that Foucault had. He wanted to understand fundamentally what is the human and how, is, how are these human uh, phenomena and how, how are these human practices and institutions constructed? What makes them possible? What is the bedrock upon which the order of things um, is kept together? And he does this not simply to describe um, the present, but there is a critical impulse to this. And, and this emerges in the word, no problematization. Foucault, was a thinker of critique. History for Foucault has a critical work, and this is the task of genealogy and problematization. That is, to make that which appears to be taken for granted in the contemporary era, that which is taken as self-evident and even unquestionable, Foucault seeks to use history to identify the cracks, the contingencies that have made us um, who we are. And this is why, although historical in nature, Foucault's work always starts and is engaged with a contemporary concern. This is the critical and political attitude that guides his interest in history. It is not what he calls traditional history that he is interested in, but rather what he calls effective history. His historical researches were undertaken in order to disturb our present day conceptions, our take, taken for granted realities, and ultimately to, to provide a diagnosis for the pres of the present in an attempt to provide avenues for transformation and resistance of particular systems of control, government, and domination. And this is what he tries to achieve in his various books, which provide histories or genealogies of social and historical phenomena. Um, I'll, I'll start ending by going through a few quotations in Foucault's work, where he particularly refers to the sort of interest he has in history. And in this particular quote from an essay titled What is Enlightenment, Foucault describes philosophy as a critical history. And this, this is, can be seen in this quote, where he says that criticism, by, the, by which he means philosophical criticism, is a historical investigation into the events that have led us to constitute ourselves and to recognize ourselves as subjects of what we are doing, thinking, and saying. And he goes on, this critique will separate out from the contingency that has made us what we are, the possibility of no longer being, doing, or thinking what we are, do, or think. And I think this quotation 
clearly highlights, first of all, that the way, the dominant way in which Foucault does philosophy is through a historical investigation. And this historical investigation has a very specific aim, namely to identify the historical contingencies that are determining um, our present in an attempt to open up new ways of doing things as a society. And again, um, another um, quotation, again from the essay, What is Enlightenment? Which is, of course, um, a nod to uh, the essay by Immanuel Kant by the same title from the 18th um, century. And again, in this essay, Foucault describes philosophy as a historical critical attitude. And he says that this historical, historical critical attitude must be an experimental one. Foucault uses history, perhaps subversively even, to experiment on the present in order to open up new ways of who we can be as a society and as individuals. And this is the, this is his scope, or the scope of his inquiry, to work on the limits of ourselves, the limits of the present, the limits that are imposed on any given present. And he also um, characterizes his work as a historical ontology of ourselves, which means that the task of philosophy is to tell us who we are in this history we are living in. And his approach is not a very ambitious one in so far as it shies away from making grand global or radical historical claims. Foucault was very suspicious of meta-narratives or grand historical narratives that seek to encompass um, you know, the, the grand scheme of, of at least um, recent um, human history. His task was more to engage in micro histories and in, 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 he was concerned with micro practices of power since for him these, this is what reveals um, what holds our present together. Right? And he prefers these partial transformations, which can be achieved through a correlation of historical analysis and a practical attitude. And this is ultimately the politics of history, that historical inquiry is connected with a practical attitude that is concerned with social and political concerns. And this philosophical ethos, he says, defines us as free beings. So this sort of philosophy, which, is his, which has a historical inflection, is also an exercise of freedom. And this, I think, is the politics of history that I wanted to discuss um, in, in this talk. Foucault uses history in a productive way, in an effective way, to challenge taken for granted realities and to open up new ways of how, who we can be as a society and as individuals. And some conclusions beyond this is, is, is that I want to emphasize, first of all, the importance of history to doing philosophy. Of course, my, my background um, is in philosophy, so I am speaking as someone who's coming from philosophy. Um, but following Foucault, perhaps, I recognize and emphasize um, the importance of history in philosophy, not just to study the history of philosophy, but to recognize that philosophy happens in a history. And I think that um, we, need to, we need to teach philosophy in such a way that is sensitive to the historical phenomena, to the social, cultural, economic phenomena, factors that are impacting the philosopher who is writing in any given era. And lastly, um, uh, I think that this is what makes um, Foucault's work particularly influential and important in modern academia, that various scholars have used his work in a variety of disciplines, disciplines from political theory to history, to education studies, to gender studies, um, geography, uh, technology studies, and so on. And these are some of the ways um, in which Foucault's ideas can be used in practice. Foucault said that he would be happier if rather than people writing books or articles about his work, but rather, he preferred that people use his work as a box of tools in order to conduct um, inquiries into our present. And I think that uh, there's a lot um, of, of av research avenues that can be opened up and renewed through Foucault's work. Um, these are some of the some readings I suggest, particularly on this topic of Foucault and the politics of history. With regard to books, I suggest um, Discipline and Punish, and the History of Sexuality, Volume 1, which are um, classic um, books of philosophy and perhaps even of history 
And then I, I identify a few other interviews and essays that he gave on this topic of history, such as this interview from 1967 on the ways of writing history, an important essay from 1971 on Nietzsche, genealogy and history. If you want to have a look at the, what the genealogy actually looks like, um, there's an interesting essay from 76, the politics of health in the 18th century. This, this is particularly relevant in today's, um, the period that we are living in today, and this is why I'm suggesting um, this essay, because Foucault goes through history to understand how notions of health um, and, and medicine, how they became entangled um, in, um, in society and how they were exercised how they are a form of power that they are exercised upon the whole of a population. And lastly, another important interview from 78, um, questions on method in which Foucault responds to answers, responds to questions on how he does the historical inquiries that he does and what are the stakes of his analysis. Okay, I hope this was um, interesting and feel free to get in touch if you have any questions and, and comments. Thank you.